Okay, so pin core testing basically determines that uh, um, that the like pins are you know have the uh, correct type of structure. There's no opens, no shorts, and you know the supply you know cons consumes the right amount of current. You know, uh, first thing you do is take your emitter and you tie it to the ground pin of your device. So on this device, it happens to be pin six. So I'm going to grab this and go one, two, three, four, five, six. You know, and the first thing you want to check is to make sure you have a proper supply, you know, um, structure. And it, uh, you know, it ex the, the, the current rating is correct. So the supply pin is pin 5. I'm going to put this in pin 5. Pin 5. Okay, now this device is specified for a, um, a typical of 13 milliamps at 5 volts. Um, I'm going to increase my current because I'm trying to look at the uh, the current at five, and uh, essentially, in, uh, you know, one of the things you'll see a lot of times on these pins is uh, a diode in the negative direction. If I blow this out here, you can see it's a uh, 0.2, 0.4, 0.6, 30.7 diode. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to one volt per division, and I want to measure the uh, the current. At uh, at five volts, so I'm gonna I'm not gonna put it in a corner. You can do that, but one volt, two volts, three volts, four volts, five volts. Yeah, this device is drawing, you know, f two, four, five milliamps, which I, that's under a typical of 13. That's good, you know. And so basically, now we're ready to kind of begin test pin core testing. Um, what we'll do there is you uh, remove your collector and we'll short uh, short VCC to ground and you can do this on you know you can not short VCC to ground and and do a run you know without it and then move your move it over to VCC and do another run <coughs> we're gonna kill two birds with one stone and just go one loop around so Essentially now, if you look if you look at the pin out of the devices, um, I like to set this up to plus or minus five volts like this. You know, it's somewhat of a low current of uh, you know, probably like one amp, one milliamp there. You know, that that might require a little bit of a of adjusting. And uh, we kind of basically group these pins, you know, into their their uh, groups. You know. Um, the first pin we looked at was pin 40, you know, and we, let me get in here. And we determined this, because uh, it was called the Schmidt trigger, we called this the pin Schmidt trigger. So if you look at pin 40 is deemed a Schmidt trigger input, pin 39 is considered a Schmidt trigger input. Now this is a very common structure you'll see everywhere. You know, we call this a digital input structure, even though uh, on this device it's actually the structure of um, of a uh, digital output <laughs> or the digital analog converter output. So, but you know, following the um, following the data sheet, it's uh, 40 is Schmidt trigger, 39 is Schmidt trigger, then 30. Yeah, let's see, 37. Through 34 is going to be the same as a digital input. Digital, 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 digital. Now I do believe we'll jump to Schmidt triggers again. And now I, the, whole, the whole rest of the side of this chip is actually going to be the same. But it's up to you to take the data sheet, lump the pins that are, you know, in groups at first, you know, um, based on their definition and their function. You know, and go through and and physically look at each chip pin. And then once you determine the you know what pin, how many different structures you have, 
then you group your structures into groups. So first we went through and we said, you know, all of our uh, D, uh, DA converter outputs and we figured out what their structure should look like. And, you know, then we figured out what all of the uh, IO port structures should look like. Then when we saw, hey, both of those are Schmidt triggers, then we lumped them into the Schmidt trigger group. So, you know. And, and the importance of the devices is to make sure that all the Schmidt trigger curves look the same yes. between all the points, yeah. right? So we're looking for non-variance. So, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of simulate a failure. You know, when we run down all of these legs along this chip here, we're looking for that structure. Um, if we see if we see it go out here or go here, then that's going to be, this is actually going, hey, I'm shorted. Yeah. And this is like, hey, I have a higher breakdown or I might even be open. That's what an open looks like. This is what a short looks like. And you you know. don't want any of them. Yeah, so you want short. no variation, you know, in these, uh, these pins, you know, because you might go to another part and all of a sudden this curve will be in here. And what that all means uh, is that, you know, either that transistor damaged or it's a different type of process, you know. And uh, so, you know, the, you're kind of a, you know, you have to use your, um, you know, um, use your head and determine that, you know, start with a device and use that as a foundation and go from there, you know. And, uh, you know, so essentially with this device, we kind of ran through it already and knew that every single structure down this whole side, with the exception of these, the digital inputs over here, are going to uh, look the same. So, you know, this is the swipe method. Let's go all the way down them like this. So, you know, now we're going to go to the, uh, you know, to the front side, which essentially only had two digital inputs in the front, or actually four digital inputs in the front, and then your supplies, and then the, we see the, the Schmidt trigger structure all the way down the other side. So, you know, this is a, uh, you know, uh, a good technique to do on, on large amounts of device pins. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's nice sometimes when you have multiple grounds and multiple supplies to also check that they be shorted together. Yeah.